talking with Republican U.S. Senate nominee Gabriel Gomez. And Mr. Gomez, we were talking before the break about uh, uh, the brain drain. Uh, people, foreign nationals who come here, get a good education and degree, but then don't keep their talents here. They go elsewhere. And obviously, one of the factors there is the high cost of living here. The Metro West Economic Research Center released its annual re report on that region's economic trends last week, and they found that the high cost of living has mostly wiped out the impact of rising wages. The real average salary adjusted for inflation has barely moved from 10 years ago. What would you do in the Senate to bring down the cost of living here, if anything? Well, I think we need to, you know, jumpstart the economy, too, because right now what we have is we just have too much high unemployment right now, and we need to have companies so they get incented so that they actually start getting rid of this uncertainty because of all the regulations going on and start hiring people so people can actually start, you know, paying taxes and start funding the government and actually be able to uh, afford. Right now what we had also is, you know, we raised taxes on the top 2%, we raised on everybody else, so people with the payroll tax, people have less income coming home every month. And so they can't go out there and actually, you know, sponsor and, uh, and patronize a lot of businesses out there and that's what's dragging down the economy. What kind of incentives do you have in mind for business? Well, I think you give them an incentive to, to invest in their R&D, give them an incentive to, to move here to, uh, to Massachusetts and to be based here and to hire people. Just for, just give them an incentive. Just like, it's just part of the economic prosperity. Uh, another term for it is corporate welfare. How much is too much? I mean, uh, uh, Republicans have railed against the Obama administration for trying to help incent green in industries. Uh, where do you draw the line? Well, there is a fine line because, I mean, the private sector should be able to fund and drive a lot of the innovation, a lot of technology, for instance, in the clean tech. I think the government has somewhat of a role, but it should really be driven by the private sector. Uh, let's talk about the contrast between yourself and your opponent. What do you see as the key differences between how you'll behave with regard to economic growth in the U.S. Senate and what Ed Markey might do? Well, I think one of the biggest differences is that, you know, I acknowledge that there is an economic problem. I acknowledge that there's $17 trillion in debt. And I acknowledge right now that companies are not hiring people right now. You know, when Congressman Markey came out with his victory speech, he started slinging mud right away. I don't think he mentioned the economy one bit. And I think that just comes from the fact that, you know, I've been in the real world for the last, you know, first nine years in the military and the 60 years in the private sector. And he's been in his world, which is down in D.C., for the last 37 years, not knowing what's going on in the real world with the economic, with what's going on in the economy right now. And I, I know that I can go down there and start pushing economic policies that are going to be friendly to businesses so they can start actually hiring people. Well, uh, a lot of people say that one of the things that is suppressing economic growth, along with tax hikes like the payroll tax, is spending cuts. And yet on your website, uh, you say you'd be an aggressive spending cutter. How do you reconcile that? No, I, I want to take a balanced approach. I think we've already taken the uh, revenue side, but I also want to take a balanced approach on the spending side. Every part of government has some room that you can cut. Even the Defense Department, I think, can have areas to cut. And I'm a military guy. I mean, I would never cut anything for the troops and how they can actually go out there and execute their missions. But there's parts of the, the Department of Defense that you can cut. For instance, I think there's 10 to 15 percent too many civilian employees on the DOD. And there's a joint strike fighter program that I think could only go to the Air Force instead of also the Navy because they've got their Super Hornet plane. But uh, there's also areas that we should talk about the entitlements. The president came out with his budget addressing entitlements with his chain CPI. I think that we need to address that for people of my generation and younger generations, but not for people that are in retirement right now or approaching retirement. And these are just areas that we can actually address the spending side. I regret that our time is up. Uh, I'd like to continue this conversation at some length. Well, we'd like to have you back again, and we'd certainly like to host a debate between you and your opponent uh, between now and June 25th. Are you up for that? Absolutely. You know, we challenged Congressman Markey to three debates, and we haven't heard anything back, but I'm happy to come anytime. Okay, maybe he lost your phone number. Try again. It's www.gomezforma.com. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see you. Gabriel Gomez, Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate. That's it for us. Now it's back to my colleagues for more WBZ News.